Hello again guys and welcome back to Feed the Beast Horizons. Sad to say I've not had an awful lot of time to do much experimenting with Minecraft over the last week or so, but there have been a few bits and pieces that uh, have changed since the last one of these videos. Um, first of all, I've got this steam engine constantly running. This is the one that I was originally setting up before and I redid it for the tutorial video. It doesn't have anything connected to it so it's not really doing anything but apart from making a lot of noise it's not really consuming any fuel or anything so I'm quite happy to leave it there just doing its thing. It's not really causing any harm. Now in the last video you remember that I was trying to get the sprinklers to work. So there's been a little bit of a change of the system. I can't remember how I had this set up on the last video actually, but the way I've got it working now, uh, got rid of the DC um, electric engines because they just weren't powerful enough. They weren't providing enough torque to the pump and as a result the pump didn't have enough pressure to make it consistently water anything more than a couple of squares, a couple of blocks. So what I've got here, I've got a pump, I have a steam engine which is working just the same way as the other one was over there. It is connected by a steel shaft. I put that in there just to separate them by one block and so I could try it out. Of course, a cooling fin to stop the whole thing exploding. Now, the way this is actually rigged up is the pump is outputting water in two directions. One's going up to the actual sprinklers themselves and the other is going back into the engine. So the pump, the uh, engine is actually providing power to its own pump that is providing water back to the engine. Now, a lot of you sent me comments and messages saying that the way these sprinklers probably work is you have to put them under the ground and have them facing upwards. Now, that is one thing I did consider. There was actually a line in the... Well, I'm never going to be able to find it now because it's the thing with this book. It's not very easy to find your way around. But where's the farming stuff? It's in here somewhere. Uh, was it previous page? Yeah, there we go. The sprinkler when supplied with water will spray it out onto the blocks below. That's particularly the line that I was looking at. Sprays it out onto the blocks below, which made me think that it does go above. Now, I thought if you had to put these under the ground with them facing up, then you're going to have a hole where the sprinkler comes up. And then at the most, you're going to have a sort of a, a 3 by 3 or a 5 by 5 square that it waters. If that's the case, you might as well just dig a hole and put a, blo a water block in there. I can now confirm, though, that sprinklers only work this way up. If you try and attach a sprinkler to the end of a pipe or the top of a pipe, they still face downwards, so they're definitely supposed to work this way. So I tried one steam engine. Uh, initially, I tried it with a single sprinkler, and it was covering a 3x3 area quite nicely. I changed the orientation of this farm. It was running across in the same orientation as this farm, but I changed it so that I could do it without without it being too close to these water source blocks. And uh, yeah, one sprinkler was supplying 3x3 three three quite nicely, so I set up another two sprinklers to provide another 3x3 three three and another 3x3. Three three. It took a little while for some of the blocks to get moisture, so one steam engine is enough to power three uh, sprinklers only just, as well as its own pump. But that's given me a nice little area. Now, one thing I have noticed, um, and I'm not sure whether it was just coincidence, but let's pop up these um, canola plants. I'm just going to pop up one, one row of them. And I'm going to pop up one row of these canola plants here as well. You do get so many seeds. You can see, I've just broken a handful of plants and I've already got two stacks of seeds. Now, what's the point in using sprinklers? Well, unless I was mistaken or this was coincidental, let's just go down this row here and plant these canola seeds. So as you can see, we've got the little seedlings. Now let's go down this row here under the sprinklers and plant another row of canola seeds. So as you can see, this one here has already started to grow. And if we look down here at this row, we've got no movement whatsoever. And look, we've got growth here, we've got growth here. We've already got plants. That, there's another one. This is actually at its second stage now. So if I just stand here, you can see that these plants have already started to grow and some of them are at the second stage these have now they have started but bear in mind these were planted first and these ones are already reaching stage two and three so unless i'm mistaken and again let me just double check the book and just make sure this might have been something that was listed uh, where are we um there we go. Hi, uh, spe yeah, speeding up their growth. It does actually say there in the list. So using sprinklers will actually make your crops grow faster. 
So it's much better to do that than it is to just plant them on a normal farm with a normal water source. So that's that system working there. Now, there were a couple of things that I did want to sort of have a go at doing. Um, where's my crafting table changed appearance? There's been, um, there has been an update recently, and it does seem to have uh, caused a few little bugs and glitches and things. You've got to remember, though, that this actually is in uh, public beta at the moment, so that's the Feed the Beast Horizons pack is in uh, public beta. So there may well be issues with it, but hopefully nothing that's going to affect us too much. So... I have a few ideas for things that I wanted to try out, but something that uh, one of you guys mentioned, which I really should do, was to make myself, if I can find it, because I can't remember what it is called now, which is really annoying. I might have to go and look it up. There we go, found the item there. The angular transducer. Now apparently this tool will tell me how much power an engine a gearbox or machine is outputting and using. I've also been told that it works on pressure for pipes as well. Very easy to build, it just requ requires an ender pearl. Now as luck would have it, I did, after I built the gravel gun, I did go out killing stuff and I did actually kill a couple of endermen and I do have a couple of ender pearls. Um, now is this going to be a normal crafting table thing? Oh, ender pearl should be in the middle. I've just realised that. Ender pearl in the middle. Ah, it can be built in a normal crafting table. So there's our angular transducer. I wasn't aware that I picked up both of those ender eyes. I didn't mean to. So let's go and use this on an engine. Okay, so if we right click on this engine, we can see that it's outputting um, 1.024 kilowatts at 256 rads. Obviously, it's not giving us the torque. Uh, which should be 4 newton meters on a DC electric engine. So this should be outputting 16 kilowatts at 512 rads. And it is. Also quite useful because it tells me how much fuel it has remaining and what temperature it's running at. So it's running at 120 degrees. Now the fuel remaining is actually just... No, it is going down. And the temperature is fluctuating as well. I did notice one thing with this the other day that uh, I, I looked and the water had gone down completely and I thought uh, it must have just been a glitch because there's no way that they actually ran out of power. It's still working quite nicely. So uh, let's see what happens if we right click on a pipe. It tells us how much water it contains and how much pressure. So as you can see, we've got um, 24 cubic meters of water uh, with no pressure at all really. Let's just set it back to daylight. So let's go and have a look at our sprinklers with that. So we've got 23 cubic meters of water and there is a pressure there. Not too Is that kilopascals or something like that? Not exactly sure what the measurement is for pressure, to be honest. Uh, 155. So as you can see, the pressure gets less and less as it goes down through the pipes. Does it actually work on the sprinklers itself? Yeah, if we actually click on the sprinkler, it tells us what the sprinkler's range is and what its max range is. So it has a one meter range. If we assume a block is probably about a meter because let's face it if the average person is around about six feet high six feet is well three feet is just short of a meter so a, a block is probably about one meter cubed so i'd say that's a, a range of one block the maximum range of eight blocks so they clearly are managing a three by three area so that's actually a nice little tool i'm going to keep that next to the screwdriver because that will be very useful now one thing i did want to have a go with as you can see on that engine i've actually got it set up so the engine is powering its own pump but the thing is the only thing that engine is powering is the pump so it can connect to the pump directly what i wanted to have a go at doing was connecting this engine up to the pump uh the steam engine so the steam engine will run the pump but also I want it so I can run something else from the steam engine as well. So what I'm going to have to do is use shafts and uh, the things that allow the shafts to turn corners. I also want to use a clutch so that I can enable and disable whatever's connected to the engine. So we're going to need at least one, two, three, four. Four shafts, two corner pieces. Let's say five shafts, two corners and a clutch. Now... I don't think you should lose any power by using lots of shafts in a row. 
And I'm basing that on real world physics, although I probably shouldn't because this is Minecraft where gravel and sand are the only materials that obey gravity. Sometimes. So what I want to do, let's start with the shafts. I built some of those before. Oh, the engine noise has actually stopped. Good. Shafts. So we need five shaft units. We don't need diamond shafts. We probably don't even need the, the uh, steel ones, to be honest. Uh, we need to build the mounts. I've already forgotten how to build the mounts. It's annoying that it doesn't come up. Let's just have a quick look. So there we go. That's how we build mounts. Uh, mounts is just four steel and a base plate in the center. So that's nice and easy. Uh, Right, very short of base plates, so let's build us some base plates because we're definitely going to need those. We're also going to need some shafts, of course. Now then. Oh, it was one base plate in the middle, wasn't it? And then like that. Yep, so I said I want to do five of these. Going to have to make some more steel. I think I've actually got some in the uh, blast furnace. So there we go. We've got five of those. So if we go over to here, we can make ourselves... Oh, fine. Oh, it doesn't look like these are going to stack. Oh, yeah, they do. Don't know why it won't just let me take a stack of them out, but there we go. So we've got five of those. That's the first thing done. Now we also want to have a look at the corner pieces. I can't remember what they're called it's not a gearbox it's bevel gears there we go bevel gears are used to change the direction of power transmission without changing the torque or speed and because it's on a gearbox it doesn't need lubricant so it will work continuously and losslessly we've also got shaft junctions which is if you i assume this is if you want to connect multi yeah in a merge mode it will take two engines outputs to combine them outputting some of the torques and split mode. Okay, so split mode allows you to take power and split it to multiple different machines. And merge mode allows you to take multiple engines and input them into a single machine or single system. And then there's a clutch, which is nice and simple because it's just a shaft with a redstone uh, on there as well. We've also got a dynamometer. Dynamometer will display its input torque, speed and power. We've got a spare ender pearl actually. I might even build one of those. Um... Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is now we know how to build the clutch because the clutch is nice and easy. I'm going to make another shaft so we've got a spare one. Uh, that's what I wanted. And then we put that in nope, at the bottom with the shaft above. There we go. So we've got a spare one of those. And then that should turn it into a clutch. Which I think it has. Yep, yeah, we've got a clutch. And why is everything re it keeps rearranging itself on the toolbar? Has it reset my key bindings? Let's have a look. Uh, it's in here, wasn't it? Yep, sort key's gone back to R. I did change that at some point. I don't know why it's changed it again. There we go. Don't know why it says grave. That's actually the uh, the apostrophe key on the UK keyboard. But uh, that should stop that from happening in the future. Okay, so we've got our clutch. We now need our two bevel gears now. Okay, having one of these days where I just forget how Minecraft works. How do we make ourselves these bevel gears? So we need steel gears. We need a lot of base plates, a lot of shaft units. I'm going to need some more steel. I'm sure that I had a load cooking. I mean, I do tend to spawn a lot of it in. Oh, no, actually don't have any. So we'll just spawn some in. Oh, I remember I was doing it on my other server. I actually have two copies of this server. I've got the live one, and then I've got another one that I can use for just messing around on as well. So it was actually that one where I was cooking them up, which is why I don't have any here. So, again, let's make ourselves a load of base plates, because we're going to need them. And we're also going to make ourselves another load of shafts. This is You do get through a lot of steel. I think the worst thing about this mod... You don't actually use that much iron, which is the good thing, because you, at the very least, you get one steel ingot for every iron ingot you put in the blast furnace. Sometimes you get more. It's coal and gunpowder that sort of slow the process down if you're manufacturing it legitimately. Not sure if I've got any gears left. I can't see any, so we'll go right ahead and make ourselves some gears. I think we're only going to need three. 
And I think that's actually everything we need. Now, it was the gear in the middle. It, I don't even know why I'm just guessing at it now because I can't remember at all. Uh, it's gear in the middle, one steel, two shafts. Okay, so the gear goes in the middle, one steel in the corner, two shafts, and then the rest of that is all base plates. There we go. So that gives us our bevel gear. So we'll make another one of those. Gear in the corner, two shafts, one steel, and then the rest are base plates. So we've got two bevel gears. Now, I've got the clutch, I've got the bevel gears, I've got the shafts, got levers, because I assume that's how we operate the clutch. The other thing I wanted to make was... Uh, not that. The other thing I wanted to make was... Oh, flywheel. Not sure how flywheels work, actually. They store rotational kinetic energy. They take some time to spin up to the input speed, but when they do, they keep spinning for some time, providing a more steady power output to a machine than a shaft hook to a varying input. Heavy materials make better, more efficient, and more powerful flywheels. Spinning one of these too rapidly will result in a violent and destructive failure. Okay, well, I kind of understand what it does in principle, but we haven't had a... Uh, reason yet to need to use one worm gear is a fast way to increase shaft torque without using a large number of intermediate gears creating an equivalent 16 to 1 ratio worm gears are inefficient and will lose some of their power leading to a much slower output speed the loss rate goes up as the input speed does so so, so that's cvt continuously variable transmission essentially dynamic gearbox Industrial coil stores energy in a large spring that can be unwound on command with redstone. Due to that, the output torque and speed can be chosen at will. It can be used to store the energy for later or sort of a capacitor. So it's a little bit like a battery. Multidimensional clutch. Wow, there's belt hubs as well. Belt hubs is if you want to transmit power over large distances. You connect to you can connect one of these to an engine, you can connect another one to a machine, and then you can use uh, up to 64 blocks of rubber band to connect the two together. But what I want to uh, build is one of these. So, going to need another shaft unit mount and an ender pearl and a screen. Well, now I've got the ender pearl, and I can very easily build another shaft unit. So there's one of those. Got the ender pearl. Now, how do we build the screen? That's the put. That's going to be the thing that we find that we're missing materials for. How do we build a screen? Well, we've got steel and we've got glass. How do we build a circuit board? Right, well, circuit board doesn't seem that complicated to build, although I am short an ender pearl. So I need an ender pearl and three gold ingots. Okay, not a problem. So... Another bit of cheating, nothing unusual about that. So let's get another ender pearl. And let's get ourselves three gold ingots. And instantly, you've already forgotten how to build the screen. So, normal crafting table. We actually get two circuit boards for this. Uh, gold top middle, and then it's across. So, normal crafting table, ender pearl in the middle. And it goes that way. And there we go. We've got ourselves two circuit boards. We also need a glass pane. Which I don't currently have. So let's spawn one of those in. So again, it's all stuff that I can build. I mean, I could go out and kill Endermen. But this is just, just for speed, really. So I think it was glass pane at the top. Circuit in the middle. And surround by steel? No. Um, come on, brain. Come on, brain. Work with me here. We're building a... Not a scream. We're building a screen. There we go. Um, oh, it's in shape crafting. There we go. So I had the, I had the recipe right. I was just doing it in the wrong... Uh, the wrong workbench. So... Crafting table, there, 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 and there. That gives us our screen. And then we can go back to the book and use that to find... So the screen's in the bottom right, 
And then it's the shafty ender pearl and the mount. Going to need another ender pearl. So screen in the bottom right, shaft, ender pearl, mount. And we get two as well. Brilliant. Okay, so let's go and see if we can rig all this up and get it working. So let's remember the plan. The plan is that the engine is going to connect back to its own pump. Hopefully there's, there's enough water in there to keep it running. So we're going to get rid of that lever. We're going to get rid of that engine. And we want our... How are we going to do this? We are going to... Okay, now... Green's the input, red's the output. That's right. So that needs to be the other way around. So we'll give that a bash with the screwdriver. Is it going to go in every direction? Yeah, green's the input, red's the output. We also need our bevel gears here. And uh, yeah, green's the input, red's the output. We are going to need another one of those greens the input reds the output and we're going to need another one of the, oh that was in the completely the wrong place this is still some pressure in the pipe so let's try that again so greens the input reds the output and we want one more bevel gear now, it looks quite messy and takes up quite a lot of space, and I suppose it is. Right, I'm struggling to get this to turn for some reason. Hmm. Okay, maybe you have to be facing a specific way when you drop it down. That's always a possibility, isn't it? So, let's try it that way. Nope, output's facing the wrong way. Let's try facing this way. Is the direction I'm facing actually making any difference to it at all? How, how did that end up there? Seriously. Okay, let's stand on here and try it. No, I can't seem to get the direction of that working. Let's just set this to daylight. Let us, uh, let us just destroy the shaft temporarily. And try this again. Ah, there we go. So we can actually just change uh, change it by right clicking on it directly, and it has an interface. That makes more sense because obviously it's multi directional. So let's put this the right way again. Green input, red output. So if I whack this with my screwdriver, I can see. This is the black side. So the black side needs to be the input. And what color is that side? Orange. So black in and orange out. So black input, orange output. I click that with a screwdriver now. Yep, there we go. That's working. And the pump is now working. So brilliant. That's actually how I wanted it to, um, to work out. Now, one thing that I do realize that is now an issue is this box. This box is now wrong because I can't connect anything else to the engine. So that what that actually needs to be is one of the th uh, multi-junction boxes. Needs to be one of these, a shaft junction. I've got another gear, so let's go and make one of those. Now I know I've got all the mats to make one. I've instantly forgotten how to. So the steel gear in the middle, with plates down the right hand side and steel in the corners. So let's have a look. We need the steel gear in the middle. And as usual, we've already run out of materials. Got plenty of shafts this time though. So plates go down the right hand side. And steel, was it in the corners? With shaft in the rest. Yeah, brilliant. So that gives us that. I'm going to build another shaft actually. And I do have a reason for doing that. Not necessarily a very good one, but a reason I have. 
So let's build ourselves another one of those. Brilliant. Okay, we've got the clutch. Great. So. This is the wrong type of block. We need a shaft junction. So this is, if we right click on it, or do we need to use a screwdriver? It's got two greens and a red, two greens and a red. How do we change the mode? Okay, so red is the input. No, this is actually in split mode. It's got two inputs and one output. We need it the other way around. How do we change the mode? Do we use the transducer? Two green, one red. Is it done with a redstone signal, perhaps? That's a torch. I wanted a lever. It's going to be one of those days. Okay, lever. Now what do we have? Nope, still hasn't changed it. Okay, so we know it's not done with the lever. Let's go back and have a look in the book again. In merge mode, it will work. It will, in merge mode, it will take two engines outputs and combine them, outputting the sum of torques and the input speed. Note that trying to combine inputs of different speeds will merely result in a shower of sparks. In split mode, they will take an input and send some torque each way. At the input speed, to swap modes, oh, shift and right click with the screwdriver. There we go. It actually tells us so. Shift, right click, and we have now changed the mode. So the green side needs to be facing towards the engine, and there we go. So we've got an output this way, and we've got an output this way. Now the torque is going to be split, sadly. So the 32 newton meters of torque that it outputs are uh, going to be going half this way to the pump which is more than enough and half is going to come out here so now I want to put in a shaft green input red output we're going to try one of these funky blocks that we built although it doesn't appear to be actually splitting the torque because it does say that we're still getting an output of 31 newton meters. Okay, there is a slight bit of loss there, but it still says we're getting 31 newton meters at 512 rads. And then what we can do is we can put down another shaft. I know this is just becoming a massive, long, complicated thing, but I'm doing this just, uh, just, just for the fun of it, really. So there's the clutch. It's the right way around, I'm sure it is. Now, I'm sh almost certain that this will require a redstone signal. And yeah, it does. So let's just have a look at that. It's not doing anything at the moment. Power is being, rece power is being received from tile entity steam engine. And it gives me the, the coordinates as well. So that's actually quite good. Is you, you, you can click on a, on a box and it will actually tell you where the power is coming from. So this steel shaft is transmitting just under 16 kilowatts of power at 512 rads a second and the power is being received from a steam engine at minus 213 78 334 and if I just look at where I am um, Y is 78 uh, I'm on block 335 so that would be block 334 and minus 213 which is basically this plot there so it does actually give you the coordinates of the engine so there you go. We've got quite uh, an interesting little setup there now. So what I've basically got, I've got one engine. That engine goes into a shaft. That shaft then goes into a shaft junction. And the shaft junction is in split mode. So it's splitting the power from the engine and taking it two ways. It's taking it in this direction and this direction. These can also be put into merge mode, which they are by default, that allows you to merge the power from two engines into one output. But they do have to be the same engines, or at least outputting the same torque and speed. Then this output goes along two more shafts into a bevel gear, which is just basically used for turning a corner. And if you right click on this, you get an interface to choose the input and output side, so if you're having to mash at it with a screwdriver, into another shaft 
and into a pump. However, the pump isn't actually doing anything at the moment. Now, let's have a look why that is. We're definitely outputting. Ah, that's going the wrong way. Let's give that a, a whack and get it facing the right way. Green is the input, red is the output. But we're still not getting any power to the pump. Insufficient power. Just say that the pump is receiving 512 watts. That's quite low. Uh, green input, red output. Okay, so this is a very interesting thing that we've got going on here. That's a that's the issue that needs sorting out. Before I sort that out, though, we've got the other shaft here. That goes into our dynameter, which tells us... Um, well, the dynamo meter, which tells us the power. Now, and then that goes through into another shaft and then into the clutch, which we can toggle on and off with a redstone lever, which means if we have something attached to it, we can turn it on and off, even though this engine runs constantly. So the problem I've got here is what it says this um, shaft junction should do. In split mode, they will take an input and send some torque each way at the input speed. So I should be getting 512 rads going in each direction, but the torque should be being split. And it's not being split evenly, because I'm, only get I'm getting 31 newton meters of torque going this way, and in this direction, I'm getting, well, nothing, really. It's getting power, but no torque. So, what's wrong with this box? It says it's outputting both ways. Ah, there we go. We actually have um, a way of... Now, if that's... Let me just change that. Shift and right click puts it in to um, merge mode. Now, if you merge mode, there is no right-click interface. Shift and right-click again puts it in to split mode for right-click. So what I want it to do is... Okay, so it must be currently doing a 31 to 1 inline. So 31 newton meters are going this way. So if I hit even... There we go. I've hit even, and now I only have uh, 16 newton meters of torque coming out in this direction because this little machine tells me that. I've got 16 newton meters of torque and I have um, 8 watts going in this direction and now there is enough power to power the pump and the pump is going which means hopefully now the engine should be receiving water even though it's still full from the pressure that was in there. So if I right click on this again and let's go for 15 to 1 in line I'm now sending 30 newton meters of torque in this direction and there's there should be two going to the pump and the pump is receiving a kilowatt of power uh, so the pump is receiving a kilowatt of power and the other 15.3 kilowatts are going through to the clutch which is good because think about it the dc electric engine only output one kilowatt of power so you can actually use the um, uh, shaft junction in split mode uh, as a bit of a, a gear ratio. You can choose how much of the power goes out. So, as you can see, uh, even will split the power evenly. Inline will favour the power going in a straight line. So, obviously, inline is this straight line here. This is inline. And if I go bend, then it will favour the extra power going out through the bended direction. So let's just set to daylight before I get attacked by something nasty. We now have a nice little setup. We've got a single engine going through to a shaft junction, which doubles back to power up the pump, which is pumping water into the engine. And then we have the most of the power going through this dynamo meter, which is great because it tells us exactly how much power is being put through here. Kind of a pointless block, really, with the angular transducer, because once you know what power is going through there, you don't really need to have this on. I guess it's useful if you're using a setup with multiple machines and multiple engines, if the amount of power could vary. 
then it's very useful to have. And then what I'm going to do later on is find a machine I can put here and I can turn off the turn on and off the power to that machine with this lever. So it does look a little bit messy and it's certainly noisy, but it really is quite fun and interesting. I enjoyed building that and I'm glad I was able to do it. As you can see here now under the sprinklers, the canola seeds that I planted here, every single one of them has completely grown. And if we look at the canola seeds I planted on the normal farm, there's still four of them that haven't reached maturity yet. So definitely worth using sprinklers. So that's what I'm going to cover for today. I'm going to have a look through and decide what I'm going to try and do on the next video and see what else I can build because I really am enjoying this mod. I will get around to covering the other mods as well, but there's just so much you can do with Rotary Craft. And my experience with Minecraft mainly comes from my roots in TechIt. And a lot of the mods that I was familiar with and really enjoyed were things like build craft and um, industrial craft. So I've always really liked things with the machines and the engines. And then onto forestry as well. Never really bothered too much with the magic mods, but I will get into those. Uh, I do have this little... I uh, don't know if you guys have seen it. I can't remember if I showed it in, a, in another video. There's a little... I don't even know what, it, what it's called. Let me fly over there. I did go over here one night time. And uh, this place here was just spawning witches constantly that were throwing uh, throwing poisons at me. Uh, I haven't interfered with it. I know there is a dispenser down here because I did take a look. Uh, and the dispenser has some stuff in it. It actually has a rotary craft gold coil, uh, some ashes, some thorns and some pumpkin seeds. Like I said, haven't taken anything out of that. Haven't done anything with it at all. I've just left it well alone. Uh, because I figured it was something to do with one of the magic mods. I could be wrong, uh, but we'll leave that until we get on to those mods. And um, that's actually quite a... It looks quite cool from the air. That's a nice little setup there. Very industrial. But that's all I'm going to cover for today. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I hope you are still enjoying the series. And I'll see you next time. So until then, goodbye for now.